This is the new iQOO 12 Pro and in today's video, let's get this phone unboxed and take a look at some of the unexpected improvements as well as a few disappointments that iQOO's brought with their new flagship. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and let's get started. Now this here is the box the iQOO 12 Pro comes in. It's very familiar, similar to what we've seen from iQOO in the past with the BMW Motorsport branding and everything. This BT Dub is the top one terabyte SKU. Let me go ahead, use that pull tab to peel the plastic off. Once we open up the box, the first thing we see is the phone itself. I like the attention to detail here, the carbon fiber pattern on the tray the phone's on. That feels like a nice touch. Now I've chosen to go for the white variant, but Aiku does also offer this phone in black as well as red. Now the red, it comes with a fall leather finish, while the black and white, AKA the legend edition, they come with glass packs. Now with this one here, the glass to the back, it has an enamel coating on top that makes it feel almost ceramic to touch. Now this back is slippery, but Ico seems to have done a good job with the anti-fingerprint coating. So at least out of the box, it doesn't seem to pick up fingerprints and smudges very easily. Also interesting is the fact that this back has a weird way of reflecting light. Nice, right? Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's get back to the box. We next have a SIM ejector tool and this card this indicates the iQOO and BMW collaboration. Then there's this white case that I absolutely hate. I mean, the quality is fine, it looks nice, sure. But you know how when I usually talk about cases, I say some variation of it protects your phone from minor dings and scratches and it improves the grip. Well, they took away half of that. This does not improve the grip, in fact, the case is smoother than the actual back panel of the phone, which is frankly ridiculous. Ah, weird, weird. Next, we have a quick start guide followed by a USB type C to type C cable that has white accents. And finally, there's a 120 watt Vivo flash charger. Now using this charger, Vivo claims you can get your phone from zero to 100 in under half an hour, which is very good. But when you think about it, it is a step down from the last generation. Now the iQOO 11 Pro, it shipped with a 200 watt charger and the claim was zero to 100 in just 10 minutes. That said, just like that phone, the 12 Pro can also do 50 watt proprietary wireless and 10 watt reverse wireless charging. Now the battery capacity on the inside, that's gone up. This time, iQOO's decided to go for a 5100 milliamp hour battery and initial reports coming out of China seem to indicate the battery life, it's very good. Now, despite the increase in battery capacity, the iQOO 12 Pro is not too heavy, weighing in at 213 grams and it's actually gotten slimmer. It's now just 8.58 millimeters thick, down from 8.9 on its predecessor. Now with the Pro phones, iQOO continues to use a curved display and given the back also curves at the edges, the iQOO 12 Pro feels even slimmer than it actually is when you hold it and in hand, it has a nice heft to it. Now this pack you're seeing here with the camera array, it has a nice little etched ring running around it. iQOO says here they've gone for a porthole design, but to me, I'm gonna call this the I love Xiaomi design. I mean, doesn't this remind you of the Mi logo? Once you see it, you just can't unsee it, can you? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, despite the camera array popping out quite a bit and not being centered really, it's still large enough to not cause any wobbling issues when you set the phone down on a surface and use it. The frame here, BT Dub, it's metal. There's nothing to the left. I love this little white bar up top. Feels like a nice touch with customization. And here you find the secondary noise canceling mic and speaker alongside an IR blaster. The power and volume keys, they are present to the right. And down below, here's where you get the primary mic and speaker, a USB type C port and a SIM card tray that can take two nano SIM cards. And as evident by the rubber grommet here, the iQ12 Pro is rated IP68 for protection from the elements. Do note that there is no headphone jack or micro SD support here. Now that's something that we've sadly gotten used to these days, but personally, I was very surprised to see I could go with a USB 2.0 Type-C port. Now that was disappointing. What isn't disappointing though, is the chip on the inside. The iQOO 12 Pro is the second phone to be powered by Qualcomm's third generation Snapdragon 8 SoC. Now this is paired with 16 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM and up to a terabyte of UFS 4.0 storage. This is a phone that's marketed towards gamers and for that, for the first time, iQOO's gone with their own self-developed enhancement chip, the Q1. 
This is supposed to help with things like low latency frame insertion and super resolution. And this time you can do both at once, meaning it is possible to run something like Genshin Impact at super scale 2K and 60 FPS. Well, I wouldn't recommend doing this for competitive gaming. It seems pretty good for other use cases. Now the iQOO 12 Pro, it did get quite warm when we ran this about 45 degrees to the back, but it did not shut down. Not even when I ran the super intensive 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme stress test, both my Xiaomi 14 and 14 Pro weren't even able to complete this test. The app just ended up getting killed around loop 16 or 17. Here the IQ, it got through the test without any issues, though it did lose about 30% of its performance at the end of 20 minutes. Now, if you did look at the numbers, you can see you'd still end up with about 8 Gen 2 levels of performance at that point. How do you guys feel about this? On a scale of 1 to 10, what would you rate the sustained performance here as? Moving on to the software side of things, we have Origin OS 4 built atop Android 14 running the show. Now this could change for global launch, so I'm not gonna focus on it a lot, but do know that the iQOO 12 Pro is responsive and blazing fast, opening up apps, jumping between them, no issues. It was all an excellent experience. The X-axis linear motor is also pretty good. There's also a 4D vibration option available for gaming, which kind of makes use of the solid existing haptics to give you feedback based on what it is that's happening on screen. Now, underneath this display, we have an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. Now, this is not the press one to register kind, but it's still very quick and even works while your finger's wet. Now with that, let's move on to the Xiaomi logo, and by that, I mean the camera array. This time, IQ seems to have paid a lot more attention to the optics. We have a triple camera setup here, and yes, there's even a proper periscope option included. Now there are three processing choices IQ provides when you wanna shoot, vivid, textured, or natural. I ended up going with Vivid for all my shots you're gonna be seeing. The primary, it's an Omnivision OV58 sensor. In a way, it's a predecessor to the Light Fusion 900 we saw on the Xiaomi 14 series, and it fares reasonably well. There's good detail, the dynamic range is above average, and the colors seem on point. Sadly, both the telephoto and the primary sensors, they have a tendency to get fogged up. This was me shooting outdoors at minus two or three degrees, now, given I've lived in warmer places all my life, is this par for the course when shooting at sub-zero degree temperatures? You guys let me know what you think in the comments. Now, under low light, the iQOO 12 Pro goes for a brighter than your regular night kind of look. Here, these side-by-sides with the iPhone 15 Pro Max should give you an idea of what I'm talking about. It even slightly warms up the scene. That said, it was pretty surprising to see the iQOO 12 Pro hold its own against the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Of course, it was taking a little longer to shoot. The results, I still feel they were pretty impressive. The secondary, the ultra wide, it's another 50 megapixel sensor, the Samsung JN1 this time. We've seen the sensor in action on many phones and it's usually a solid performer and continues to be one even here. That said, the colors aren't very accurately matched to the primary. The third sensor is a 64 megapixel Omnivision OV64B that's paired with a f2.57 telephoto lens that allows for 3x optical zoom. Now the marketing is that it can do up to 100x hybrid, but at that point we are looking at an oil painting. But till 10x, honestly, the results are quite usable. It even allows for 5x super macro, which was fun to shoot. With video, you can shoot it up to 8K30, but there's no solid stabilization here. I wasn't a fan of the footage quality either. 4K60 is just fine, maybe a little lacking on detail, but it's pretty stable, quite usable. With selfies, we have a 16 megapixel shooter that does a fair job, but for video, it's capped to 18030, which I feel is atrocious. Now let's move on to what you actually see those images you shoot on, the display. Ico's gone for a 6.78 inch Samsung E7 AMOLED panel here. This one has a Quad HD Plus resolution, 144Hz refresh, and comes with support for LTPO technology to vary refresh as per requirement and improve efficiency. The brightness peaks at about 600 nits manually, goes up to 1500 nits under auto mode when used in direct sunlight, and for HDR can hit a peak of 3000 nits matching the Xiaomi 14 phones. This excellent display coupled with a loud and clear stereo speaker should make for a great media experience.
And now before we wrap, a shout out to video sponsor Anne Burnick. This is their latest handheld, the RG Arc. If you were a fan of Sega controllers, you'd be right at home with this one. It's got a circular D-pad with a six button layout that's perfect for arcade games. The display, it's a large four inch LCD panel and you get the same strong performance as you did with the RG353 series, given it's the same chip on the inside. Now there's a 3500 milliamp hour battery and the whole thing feels very nice to hold and use. Now to know more about the Anbernic RG Arc, check out the link in the description below. Now coming back to the iQOO, let's talk price. The iQOO 12 Pro starts at $49.99 RMB, which is the same price the iQOO 11 Pro launched at. While the reduction in charge speed might seem like a downgrade, the base variant having double the RAM, 16 is the standard now, the IP68 rating, the extra attention paid to the optics, I feel they make the iQOO 12 Pro more competitive of an offering. That said, I really do wish they'd upgraded the Type-C port though. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye-bye.